Atheist Roundtable, a gathering place for rational people. <laughs> Funny pictures and videos. <laughs> Profound atheist quotes. The religious going crazy. The latest news. World domination. Casual discussions. Baby eating. <laughs> the ultimate forum for a lively dialogue. Come join the fun at atheistroundtable.com. David Barton Rewrites History David Barton is a fanatical Christian activist, self-proclaimed historian, and a proponent of the supposed myth of the separation of church and state. Not unlike the character Winston in the book 1984, David Barton has set about rewriting history to fit the beliefs of religious social conservatives. So far, he hasn't yet altered records and rendered historical figures as unpersons, but he does use his brand of lies and misrepresentations to convince his followers that there is an academic conspiracy to secularize American history. In his new book, The Jefferson Lies, Mr. Barton tries to convince his readers that they have been intentionally misinformed about the belief values of Thomas Jefferson and the other founding fathers. According to Chris Rada, the author of the book Liars for Jesus, the Religious Rights Alternate Version of American History, she was almost immediately struck by his genius of misrepresentation. He likes to refer to an 18th century treatise named Commentaries on the Laws of England by William Blackstone. It is a four-volume treatise summarizing concepts of English law for common readers. They were first published in 1765. Because English law is so intertwined with the Church of England, this treatise is heavily influenced by Protestant Christianity. Here are just two examples of the misrepresentation Mr. Barton uses to fool his readers. The first misrepresentation is that the Commentaries of the Laws of England was the basis of the legal training of Thomas Jefferson and the Founding Fathers. The fact is, Thomas Jefferson studied law under the tutelage of George Wythe from 1762 to 1767. Considering the fact that Commentaries wasn't published until 1765, it's doubtful that it had a major role in his training. As for the other Founding Fathers, considering the fact that most of them were much older than Jefferson, their legal training would certainly not have been influenced by Commentaries. The second misrepresentation is Jefferson's opinion of Commentaries on the Laws of England. Mr. Barton writes, Jefferson affirmed that American lawyers used black stones with the same dedication and reverence that Muslims use the Koran. He implies that Jefferson himself had a dedication and reverence for commentaries. However, the affirmation he refers to appears in a letter from 1810 written to John Tyler, where Jefferson says that he lamented the depreciation of law and science by the influence of Blackstone. In a later letter, also written to John Tyler, Jefferson refers to Blackstone's followers as ephemeral insects of the law. There is yet another letter from Jefferson describing Blackstone's commentaries as containing principles that were dangerous to the Republican form of government. These are just two of the many, many misrepresentations Mr. Barton uses in his books. See the links in the details section for a more in-depth look at other misrepresentations. The job of any historian is to eliminate, wherever possible, personal bias when researching and writing about historical people and events. Mr. Barton fails miserably in this fundamental qualification. As such, he does not deserve to even self-identify as a historian. Oh, <laughs> oh,